Hello everyone, this is Christopher. I'm here at Omiya Station today with Brian Williams, who has a wonderful coffee blog. Brian Coffee Spot. Brian's Coffee Spot. Com. Hey, Somewhere yes. in there. Uh, and uh, looking forward to asking Brian a couple questions, and I haven't prepared him at all. So uh, he doesn't know what he's going to be asking. Yeah, I, I can attest to that. He only told me about two hours ago when I was on my way here to meet him. He said, oh, oh, you'll be on the video. I'm like, oh, okay. So I have no idea what he's going to ask me. All right. Okay, Brian. So I have three questions for you. Okay. So how many cafes are on your blog at this point in time? Uh, now, if you'd asked me that in advance, I could have gone and checked. Nah, just a rough number. I mean, I'm up to post number 1360 today, but they're not all cafes. So some of them are travel spots, some of them are more general pieces about coffee festivals and equipment. But we're, I would say we're looking at over a thousand cafes. Okay. My second question for you is, what is the most unusual coffee experience that you have ever had? The most unusual? Well, that's an interesting one because it depends obviously how you define unusual. So I've had a lot of coffee experiences where I've done tasting flights, where you compare different coffees side by side, or so another one, I had a Maruyama single origin uh, in Tokyo, was a uh, same espresso but served in two different cups. Mm -hmm. So you could tell how the, the different cup uh, shape influenced, it, yeah. influenced the taste. And I had a, I had a very similar experience uh, in, a, in a place in Wisconsin actually, um, right up on the Thor Peninsula, really out of the way place, where he met the, Ryan was the name of the barista. Uh, and I cannot, for the life of me, now remember the name of the coffee shop, which is rather embarrassing. Um, but if you look it up on the coffee spot, it's the only one in Door County in Wisconsin on the site. And he gave me a, an espresso, and then halfway through drinking it, he poured it out of one cup into another cup. And I would have sworn that that was a different coffee. Um, but I think the most unusual was at a place called Slate Coffee Roasters in Seattle. And they run a curated coffee experience. So for the price of $40, you basically get a barista for half an hour. And he would do pretty much anything coffee related with you. So if you want to learn about the difference between naturals and wash coffees, he'll go through with and quite often they, they, they manage to have the, a similar lot or the same lot from the same farm that's been processed different ways so they can do a comparison. Or they'll do pour over versus aeropress versus espresso with the same coffee. Yeah. And he basically just gave me, um, because he knew I was going to write about it for the blog, he gave me a kind of guided tour through the, the basic principles of these Sounds things. like you got more than a half an hour. So I got, more, I got a lot more than half an hour out of it. Um, and what one, one of the really interesting things he did was the deconstructed latte. So it was a shot of espresso, and then it was the steamed milk from its own. And you try them both, and then you combine them, and you try the combined thing. And it, but he did a lot of other stuff. I think that was probably the most unusual coffee experience. All right, number three. Okay. Uh, make a prediction Ooh. a very unusual prediction again about the future in coffee about the future in coffee and you want an unusual prediction you know where I want to have coffee I know where you want to have coffee yeah, <laughs> I don't think in either your lifetime or my lifetime well, could my, the end of my lifetime since there's probably no return trip well, from there true. right that's true that's very true um, a prediction an unusual prediction about coffee where do you see us in 10 years in coffee? 20 years. Something that we wouldn't see today. I was watching a 1980s movie. Uh, what was I watching yesterday? And it was just 
very interesting to think. I was watching, um, not Alien, um, I was watching Blade Runner. Oh, yeah. It was just really interesting to think about 40 years ago when I saw that film. Yes. And, you know, <laughs> what I thought the future might be. Yes. And where we are today yes. and how different it is Indeed. from what that movie and of course, Blade Runner was set in November 2019, yeah. so we are here. Where yeah. are our some flying cars? Well, maybe they're all around us. Well, that is, I, I did wonder. <laughs> we, would we know? Um, so, I mean, I can give you a gloomy prediction. If we don't, as a species, get a handle on climate change, we could see coffee growing in large parts of the world getting wiped out. Well, that's why I'm counting on Elon Musk to drop nukes on Mars and then we can start growing it there. Yeah, I think, I think there's more practical ways we can save coffee. Um, so, and I mean, I don't particularly want to be gloomy because I am quite naturally an optimist, but we, we are facing a lot of problems and there, there, are, there are twin problems. One is climate change. If we don't get a handle on climate change, a lot of current coffee growing regions are just not going to be able to sustain coffee. Now there may be other parts of the world that currently don't grow coffee whose climate changes to allow them to grow coffee. But coffee's a very long-term business and you need people to want to get into coffee and that's the other thing that I really worry about. As you look at the age, I off the top of my head, um, I think the average age of coffee farmers in a lot of coffee growing regions are in their 50s. So then, well, your generation and my generation. With the sea market price of coffee hovering at $1, yeah. it's yeah. like people in Central America, it's like most of them can't grow coffee yeah. anymore. They can't afford, they can't to. afford to. And, and so the, they're going to tear down those trees yeah. and build some, and, you know, and even do something else, right? Their children are not going to go to coffee farming. Yeah. Because imagine you grew up on a coffee farm. You see your parents working really, really hard for very little return. And why on earth are you going to do that? There's so much in the way of opportunity that wasn't there a generation, two generations ago. So we have to incentivize the next generation of coffee farmers. Even if we do get a handle on climate change, we have to incentivize them to stay growing coffee. And the only way we're going to do that is by paying more for coffee. So no, let but me I give think you... that's kind of like what George Howe has done since he sold yes. Coffee Connection to Starbucks yeah. and started the Cup of Excellence yeah. program and got involved in that. And there's a, there's and a lot of positive news at the high end of the market. So yeah. I, I think we'll always see good quality coffee at the high end of the market. But so let me let me give you a prediction. In 20 years' time, coffee will have bifurcated even more than it is now. There's going to be, there's still going to be that low grade dollar a cup for the US market cup of coffee that frankly is, tastes rubbish. Oh, look at that. That's and, one of your bowls <laughs> of latte. A bowl of soup latte, oh. yes. Um, and that, I think that will still be there, but it will be mass produced on me mechanized farms, uh, owned largely by big corporations. At the other end of the scale, there will be good quality speciality coffee, but it will be a lot more expensive than it is now. There won't be, and I don't want this to be the case, I hope this isn't the case, but I, I worry that there, there will be a gap in the middle of the market, so the high end of the market will still be there, but you will be paying, as a matter of course, $10 a cup. Well, maybe how many hours will one have to work for that wonderful cup of coffee is the yes. question. Yeah. And otherwise, you just had to drown it with sugar and milk. Yes. So I think it comes down to what, what do you want out of your cup of coffee. If you're just drinking it for the caffeine, which a lot of people do, yep. you're, you're down at that one dollar cup. For those of us who actually savour it as an experience, I think there will always be that market there. And one thing that really heartens me is that the foodie market, let's call it, the craft beer, the local produce, there, there's an increasing movement to people actually savouring their food, enjoying their food, and it isn't about price. They're willing to pay for the quality. And I think that could be the saviour for the future of coffee. 
but we'll see. All right. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, look forward to our next uh, opportunity to have another cup of coffee together. Yeah, probably this time next year, to be honest. Right. But I'll be back. Thank you.